Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Greetings in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Prophet Lister coming to you from Harare, Zimbabwe. Hallelujah. We give praise to God. Uh, we've been encountering uh, some technical challenges since uh, 8 o'clock. And we thank God because we are here and uh, the Lord is wonderful, the Lord is good. Welcome online and please comment, tell us where you are watching from. Comment and tell us where you are watching from. I come today with uh, a message uh, titled, Born Great. Born Great. If you can hear me, please type loud and clear. You can hear me, please type loud and clear. You can hear me, type loud and clear. And share the broadcast. Share the broadcast, invite others. Share the broadcast and invite others. Hallelujah. Share the broadcast and invite others. Lipro shikatira taprando kosu katira ta. La sheketeri taprando kosu katari tapo. Zoku sakatira taprande keseketo. You can hear me, type loud and clear. You can hear me, type loud and clear. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome all of you. Welcome all of you. If you can hear me, type loud and clear. If you can hear me, type loud and clear. Hallelujah. 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 Lika shaka toruta prada bakasika. Le seketira taprando kosupate. Rashi katira taprando kosupato. Luka si pradi bakasika teri tapo. Zoko tura taprande beke seketo. Lija kusaka tira taprade bakasika te. Zeke tira taprando kosuka taradaba. I come with a message loud, born great. I come with a message born great. Hallelujah. Born great. Just type loud and clear if you can hear me wherever you are watching from. Comment also and tell us where you are watching from. Comment. Tell us where you are watching from. Hallelujah. Comment. Tell us where you are watching from. Comment. Tell us where you are watching from. Hallelujah. Plasha katara taprada bakasika. Liketira taprado boko supatari tapo. Leze kesika teri taprada bakashupate. Zepre debe kesika tara taprando kosukato. Zika suka tira taprada bakashikato. Leke teri taprando kosukatira tapo. Laza baka shaka taradabo. Zoku saka tira tapo. Let us share, let us share. And invite others, let us share 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 and invite others, hallelujah. So in the next uh, few seconds, in the next few seconds, uh, I'll be going straight into the word, hallelujah. In the next few seconds, I'll be going straight into the word, hallelujah. Kriko shupa tira tapranda kasika. Lika tira taprada baka sikato, zuka saka tira taprada baka shekete, le seke tira taprada baka suka, la jaka saka saka tura taprada baka sikato, zoku saka sekete rita prada baka sikate. Share, share, share and invite others, share and invite others, share and invite others, share and invite others, hallelujah, share and invite others. Share and invite others. Share and invite others. Prika suka tira ta prando kosupa. Like tira ta prado boko suka tira ta. La shaka tira ta prada baka sika toru ta po. Zoku saka seke tiri ta prada baka shupa. Like tira ta prada baka seke tiri ta prando kosupa te. Zebre deke seke toru ta prando kosupa. La shika tiri ta po. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, type loud and clear. If you can hear me, type loud and clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can hear me, type loud and clear. Hallelujah. I hope the signal is now okay. We've been having a technical challenge. We've been having technical challenges since uh, 8 o'clock when we wanted to start. 
but we will go straight uh, to the message of today. Hallelujah. We'll go straight to the message of today. And uh, the scripture for today comes from 1 Samuel. It comes from 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to read from verses 1 up to 13. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verses 1 to 13. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Verses 1 to 13. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read from uh, the New King James Version. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. And it reads, Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn me? How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And so Samuel said, How can I go? If so hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall not anoint for me, you shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me, is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen him this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest, and there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and bright with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. May God bless the reading of his word because it is holy. Hallelujah. So this is an account uh, of how God had rejected. You find uh, when you read in chapter 15 that God had rejected Saul as king. And here he was choosing to replace him with another person. Saul had been disobedient before God, and God had no option but to reject him. Hallelujah. We find in verse 1, God is telling, uh, is speaking to his men, to his prophet Samuel, and is asking him, God asked Samuel, for how long are you going to mourn Saul? Because God had rejected Saul. But to Samuel, because Samuel had been sent by God to... Uh, to was now being rejected and for a long time he had been mourning 
But I want to tell you, child of God, that there is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time to mourn and a time to move on. There are people today, there are situations that... We apologize. Uh, we seem to be having uh, network challenges. We seem to be... Having, but I was saying there is a time to mourn. Samuel had been mourning for uh, Saul that he had been rejected, someone whom he had anointed, someone whom he had uh, anointed with oil and to place him in office as king. And God had rejected him because of disobedience. But Samuel kept crying. Samuel kept mourning for him. But there's a time for everything, child of God. There is a time to mourn. And there is a time to move on. There is a time to mourn and a time to move on. You need to understand the times and seasons of God. You need to understand the times and seasons of God. When you get to a point, you may have lost a loved one. You may have lost a friend. You may have lost a brother. You may have lost uh, someone who was close to you. Morning comes due to grieving. Morning comes due to grieving. You may be grieving. You may be in a grieving state. I don't know the stage which you are at in the grieving. But there is a time to mourn and there is a time to move on. Hallelujah. There is a time to mourn and there is a time to move on. If we reject the power of God, he will raise another one in our place. I want you to know this child of God. He says, if, we, if you do not worship me, I will raise the very stones to worship me. Hallelujah. But we are better than stones, child of God. We are better than stones. We are to worship him. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. So because God had rejected uh, Saul, he then sends his prophet Samuel to the house of Jesse. But Samuel is afraid. From the scripture that we have read in 1 Samuel chapter 16, we find that Samuel is afraid of what Saul may do to him. Listen to me, child of God. Many a times in our lives, we begin to feel uh, the urge to do something. We feel uh, the pressure. We feel the push of the Holy Spirit but fear grips us. Are you with me, child of God? There are certain things that God has ordained in our lives. But because of fear, we fail to move on. We fail to do it. We fail to move from where we are. We continue in a state of mourning because we are afraid. There are many things that fear has led us to, have led us, uh, to miss. We have missed many breakthroughs because of fear. And fear here is standing for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. So it is just a fake. It is just uh, a cover. It is not real, but it causes many people to fail to move. It causes many people to sit and to stay in a state of uh, inactivity because they are afraid if we move from here are we going to be successful if we move from here are we going to make it it's, if, it's fear can hinder even in the area of relationships to say can you get into this relationship am i going to be adequate to, for my partner many people they have been in previous relationships they've been in abusive relationships and the moment someone comes, a genuine person comes and begins to say, no, I love you, my sister. I love you, my brother. Because of past experiences, because of past hurts, because of past uh, trauma, someone fear kicks in and you begin to ask, am I going to be adequate for this person? Am I going to be adequate in this relationship? And because of fear, we have failed to move into relationships that were meant for us, relationships that were ordained by God for us. Many times we have failed in the workplace. 
there's a chance for promotion and you begin to say oh i don't think i can manage this work i don't think i can manage this position because you are afraid of your background because maybe you say there's a job uh, offer and you are worried that maybe i'm not qualified enough i want to tell you child of god don't be afraid don't fear even in school maybe there there's uh people who are being chosen for for certain tasks in the school and you begin to tell yourself no i don't think i can do this you begin to look down on yourself and because of fear you fail to uh to take uh charge you fail to take uh the position and maybe it is a business opportunity you begin to say no i want to get into this business you know you can do the business you know you have the expertise you know you have the market but fear just grips you because you know someone who has failed in that business so fear still grips you and it begins to tell you no you cannot make it no you cannot manage and because of fear we have failed to take up opportunities that we were supposed to take but i come to tell you child of god uh, Samuel feared what Saul could do to him because he knew that if Saul hears that I have gone to anoint someone else as king, then there was going to be a challenge. It was the same as treason. After today, I pray that may you take your fears head on. Whatever it is that you are fearing, child of God, whatever it is that you have been planning to achieve whatever it is that you've been planning to do and but fear has gripped you take it head on begin to do it begin to move begin to move in the light of that testimony and god is going to be with you he says i am with you i'll never leave you and i'll never forsake you god is with you he will never leave you and he'll never forsake you listen to me child of god god tells so Samuel, that I will show you the one I have chosen. And he instructs him how he is going to do to go about it. Are you with me, child of God? When we are moving in the will of God, when you are moving in God's will, we are sure of his protection. We are sure of his covering. Hallelujah. So Samuel was afraid to say, what will Saul think? What will Saul say? What will Saul uh, say if he hears? But when you are moving in the will of God, you are protected. You are covered. Rudo, welcome. God bless you. Continue to share. Share the broadcast and invite others. Hallelujah. So you, when we move in God's will, we are assured that we have his covering. We are assured that we have his protection. And as we are moving in the will of God, we are sure that we have his guidance and his direction. Now, let me tell you, child of God, there is the perfect will of God and there is the permissible will of God. So Samuel was moving in the perfect will of God because this is what God wanted him to be doing. The perfect will of God is what God wants you to do and you do exactly that. The permissible will of God is what you want and you ask for it from God and God allows it to happen. That is the permissible. He allows it to happen because you are desiring it, because you have asked for it. Hallelujah. So Samuel is in the perfect will of God. And as we are in the will of God, we are sure of his protection. We are sure of his covering. As we are in the will of God, we are sure of his guidance. He says, I go and I will show you the one I have chosen and I will tell you how to go about it. Hallelujah. There is protection there is guidance there is a covering because Samuel is afraid to say what will Saul think he will kill me it will be treasonous for me to go there but God assures him that because we are in his perfect will he is with us because we are in his perfect will he is guiding us and he gives us direction and he's giving us protection and he gives us a covering hallelujah may you be covered in the name of Jesus Christ May you receive divine direction in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Makwara, welcome, welcome. You say connecting from Malawi. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
So the people had rejected God. I want you to understand this is the background of the story. The people had rejected God and they had rejected him as a king over them. The people of Israel, they had rejected God as a king over them. Hallelujah. And they had chosen for them, they had asked from God a human king, a, a person as a king. Hallelujah. And God had granted, God had given them as a raised soul. God had, had raised, raised soul for them. So there are certain things that we may ask from God. And they are not what God wanted to give us. But because we asked for it, he gives us still. So God was the king. God wanted to reign over the people of Israel. But the people of Israel went ahead and began to ask for a king. So do you realize that there are some things that we have asked for that we end up beginning to pay a price for, for having them? Because when we ask, we get them. And because wherever there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. When we pray and we ask, God answers. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, child of God, may you be in the perfect will of God. May you know the will of God for your life. And may you continue to move in the will of God for your life. Hallelujah. So as we pray, when we ask, God gives, this to us, gives it to us. The people of Israel, they prayed for a pe person to, as king. They rejected God to continue as their king. So God, God followed what they wanted. And he gave them Saul. But Saul, he then, became, he then was rejected by God. And God had to raise his own man. Hallelujah. God had to raise his own man. And David had spent so many years looking after his father's sheep. And it had been a long time. Uh, this time as David was in the field uh, looking after his uh, sheep, it was not a season of rejection, but it was a season of preparation. It was a season of training. Are you with me, child of God? Never mistake the time of preparation with rejection. Never mistake the time of preparation with rejection. I said it before that there is a time for everything. There's a time for you to be called. There's a time for you to be prepared. That is for you to be trained. And there's a time for you to be sent. Are you with me, child of God? There's a time for you to be called. And there's a time for training. And there's a time to send. So you need to know which season you are in. You need to know which season you are in. In verse 4, we find Samuel, he obeys God. As God has sent him to say, no, go, I will show you, I will guide you, I will cover you, hallelujah, I will protect you, and I will tell you exactly how to do things. May we be sensitive enough to hear the voice of God. May we be sensitive enough to hear the voice of God and to understand exactly what God wants in our lives, hallelujah. So Samuel, when he obeys God, he goes to the house of Jesse and uh, he goes to Bethlehem where Jesse was dwelling with his family. And Jesse, uh, as we know, Jesse is an offspring of Boaz and Ruth. Jesse was an offspring of uh, Boaz and Ruth. And Bethlehem, that is the town where they will come from. And as the elders saw Samuel approaching, the Bible says they trembled. The elders, they trembled when they saw Samuel because they knew what he had done to the Amalekite king, that is uh, King Agog uh, in Gilgal, where he had chopped him up, where he had chopped up the king. Hallelujah. I pray for you today. I pray today. May you be recognized wherever you step. May you be recognized. May they recognize you. Wheresoever you shall go, wheresoever you shall step, may they be able to recognize you. Hallelujah. Let us read verses 6 to 10. Let us read verses 6 to 10. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord has anointed, has anointed, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance 
or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. The Lord has not chosen these. Hallelujah. So when the first son comes, uh, that was Eliab. The first son Eliab comes and Samuel, he gets ready. He says, wow, this one is fit to be a king because he was tall, he was handsome. Hallelujah. He, he had the looks of Saul. The Bible says Saul was tall and handsome and he was outstanding. Wherever you would look, he's the first person you would notice. And so Samuel, he notices Eliab and he says, this is the one. This is the one. Hallelujah. He says, this is the one. But God does not look at outward appearances. God does not look at the physical stature, whether you are, you are big or you are small. If you are big, it is you. If you are small, it is you. If you are tall, it is you. If you are short, it is you. Before God, it does not make a difference. Your physical appearance, before God, it does not make a difference. God examines the heart. Many times we are misled by appearance, but God looks beyond appearance. Many times we are misled by appearance. Welcome, Addington. God bless you, my son. Hallelujah. Share the broadcast and invite others. Hallelujah. So God looks at the heart. He knows even the deepest of our secrets. He knows the secrets of our hearts. He knows the secrets of our minds. He knows exactly what it is that we desire. He knows exactly what it is that we think. He knows exactly what it is. That is hidden in our hearts and in our minds. As for us, we often judge men. We often judge people by their physical appearance. We receive them by their physical appearance. Or we reject them by their physical appearance. But God looks at the heart. Examine your heart today. Are you right? Is your heart right before God? God says about David, I have found David a man after my own heart. I have found David a man after my own heart. I declare upon your life this evening that men may have rejected you, but God is choosing you tonight. Men may have rejected you, but God is choosing you tonight. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Men may have rejected you, but God is choosing you tonight. God is setting you up. You will get married in this season. You will drive a new car in this season. You will buy a new house in this season. You will start a new business in this season. You will have a wedding that will be the talk of town in this season. You will prosper in this season. The Bible says, uh, Isaac, he sowed in the famine, in the drought, and he harvested a hundredfold. He prospered despite the surrounding. It was a time of drought, but he, because he was with God, he sowed in that season, in that drought season, and he harvested a hundredfold. May you harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. May you begin to harvest in the name of Jesus. May you begin to harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. So God has his choice. 
Jesse asked all his, the, his seven sons to pass by. Those were his choice, but God had his choice. Someone just comment, I am God's choice. I am God's choice. Someone just comment, I am God's choice. I am God's choice. I am God's choice. Comment somebody, I am God's choice. I am God's choice. My God. Something wrong with our power. Malika shikate rita prando kosuka. Lika tirata prada baka shikate. Zeke seke tirata prando boko super. La shuka tirata prando kosuka. My mangwende, welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Shaka tirata prando boko suka. So, in verse 11, we find Samuel begins to ask Jesse, are these all your sons? Are these all your sons? Because now he knows God is faithful. He knows God is, God will not lie to him to say, go to the house of Jesse. And there's a man that I want you to see there. There's a man I want you to anoint there. God, he is faithful. God, he is faithful. So because God is faithful, Samuel asked Jesse, are these all your sons or there's another? And the response shows how low David was regarded in his family. The response shows how, what low regard David had in, in his family. They were looking down upon him. And the scholars, they say that David was being looked down upon because his mother was not one of the wives of Jesse. His mother had been someone who was just passing and they had given birth to David. So that is why he was looked down upon. But I want to tell you, child of God, that you may be looked down upon by men, but God is looking to you. God is saying, I have found you, a man after my heart. I have found you. I am going to use you. I am going to I'm preparing you for such a time as this. I'm preparing you for a, this season. Mordecai says to Esther, what if God has put you in the palace for such a time as this? God has been preparing you, child of God, for such a time as this. It is a time for you to manifest. It is a time for you for your crown of glory. It is a time for you to arise. It is a time for you to shine. This is your time. This is your season, child of God. Hallelujah. So it was not necessary to include him in the feast because he was useless. Before, to his father, he was useless. To Jesse, David was uh, not important. That is why he had to send him to look after the sheep while the others, they were feasting. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, child of God, because the family has rejected you, because those around you have left you behind, maybe in family programming, that doesn't mean you are useless, child of God, because God is choosing you today. God is saying, I love you. God is saying, I am with you. That you, you have been left out from high-level meetings, it does not mean that you are useless. I come to tell you, child of God, it is just a period of training. It is just a period of preparation. You have been prepared. You have been being prepared. Just because that man left you, just because that woman left you, it doesn't mean that you are worthless. It doesn't mean that you are useless. God has been preparing you. God has been teaching you. God has been preparing you for this time and this season. It is a time for you to manifest, child of God. It is a time for you to arise, child of God. It is a time for you to shine. Somebody say, I am shining my shine in the name of Jesus. Somebody type, I am shining my shine in the name of Jesus Christ. So God chooses the unlikely. God chooses the unqualified. You may look at yourself and begin to tell yourself, I am the least qualified. The Bible says, uh, Gideon said, I am the least qualified in my father's house. We are the smallest tribe in the tribe of the tribe of Manasseh. We are the smallest, but 
God does not look at that child of God. God is preparing you for something, child of God. God has been preparing you for something, great child of God. In the eyes of men, David did not qualify. But my God qualifies the unqualified. I came to declare to you that you are a child of promise. I came to declare to you that you are born great. I came to declare to you that whatsoever that has been holding you, whatsoever that has been limiting you, every barrier that has been blocking you from seeing your greatness, from your greatness manifesting. There are helpers that are supposed to notice you. There are helpers that are supposed to take you to your next level. I came to remove that veil and I declare by fire and by thunder in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are rising child of God. You are becoming a force to reckon with. They will notice you wherever you go, wheresoever you shall step. The Bible says, when Samuel got there, the elders, they trembled. They will tremble as you arrive because they will now know your value. I came to declare that value upon you. I came to unlock a blessing that is there in your life. I came, child of God, with a key tonight, a key for that greatness. You have been born great, but something has been holding you down. You have been born great, but you needed a prophet to come and unlock. I come with a key to unlock today. I came with the key to unlock you today, to unlock your destiny, to unlock your miracle, to unlock your progress in the name of Jesus Christ. Before man, David was useless. Before his father, David was useless. But before God, God knew I have been preparing him. I have prepared him for such a time as this. And God knew that he has chosen him. Hallelujah. God has chosen you, child of God. Do not worry. Do not be afraid. When they despise you, don't worry. Don't worry. Trust God. Trust God. Believe God. Men are moved by outward appearance, but God knows what is in your heart. He says, I have found David, a man after my own heart. I have chosen David, a man after my own heart. What is your heart after, child of God? Is your heart after the things of God or it's after selfish interests? What is your heart after? May your heart be moved today and may you begin to move in God's interests. May you begin to have a pure heart. May you begin to focus on the things of God, that greatness that is in you. God has given me the key, child of God. In these two days, I'm here to unlock that destiny. I'm here to unlock that blessing for you. I'm here to unlock that greatness. You have been born great, but you have been tied down. But today I come to declare as a prophet of God, wheresoever i want you to stand in as you believe with me wherever you have been tied your progress your star begin to shine right now your star begin to shine right now i unlock your blessing i unlock your open doors i unlock your season of testimony in the name of jesus take it in the name of jesus receive it God has sent his prophets into your life. Man has been looking down on you. People have been looking down on you. But God has sent his prophet with a key. I said I came with the key tonight into your life. I unlock your blessing. I unlock your future. I unlock your progress. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Somebody comments. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my blessing. Hallelujah. Somebody comment, I receive my breakthrough. I receive my blessing. Kiza pradoko supata. La jaka sukatira tapa. Lekre de pre de beke sikato, zuka saka suka tirita pra, rasha kata rata pra do boko suka, likra da branda kaseketo, zata rata pra da baka shakate, zeko turata pra do kosupato, likra da pra da baka shikato, lizeke tirata pra de kezeketo, likro du brande kasikate. Pray with me, somebody. Pray with me. I declare right now, open doors upon your life. 
I declare right now shaka tara ta prada paka suka lizeke terida prande kesikato lazoko sukate you've been born great but something has been holding you you know you have a seed of greatness there's a seed of greatness in you but something has been preventing your progress something has been preventing your success each time you try to go far you are brought down each time you try to move forward you are brought down i declare as a prophet of god any spirit of almost there any spirit of almost there in the name of jesus be delivered right now be set free right now in jesus mighty name shaka tarata brada baka shuka likra da brada baka seketo zika suka tirata pa leke de bedeke seketo zaka tarata brada baka to lujaka saka tirata prandeke seketo zika turata branda baka tikate leze ketere de bredo boko shupa Landa ramando ko sukatarata prado lozo ko supata rada bada kashikate ezeke tirata prando ko supata lakatirata prada baka sukate lekre de brede beke shikate in Jesus mighty name I declare right now may your greatness manifest where your blessings were tied may your blessings manifest I want tomorrow uh it's going to be our last day for this uh, service, having this service, this series, born great, but tied down. You know the areas where you've been tied down. But as you come to the service tomorrow, I want you to come with a glass of water. I want you to come with a glass of water. And I'm going to pray over that water. I'm going to declare over that water. And things are going to be happening in your life. There shall be a turnaround in your life. Your life will not be, remain the same. You cannot go through, continue going through cycles of whenever you are, you have a financial breakthrough, you experience sickness, sickness in the family, your sickness in your body. We cannot continue like that. God is setting you free. You have been born great. There is a seed of greatness in you. It has to manifest in this season. And I come with the God. So today we've been experiencing uh, so much uh, technical faults, but I pray that tomorrow it's going to be greater and uh, we're going to start exactly at 8 o'clock uh, Central Africa time. That is, we're going to, there's going to be deliverance tomorrow, there's going to be healing tomorrow, whatever it is that has been holding you down, whatever it is that has been holding you back. It is letting you go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. So Thank you so much for joining us today. And tomorrow, invite someone. Uh, share and invite someone. God bless you. I love you. Shalom.